hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel this is the seat out with kimberly here we talk about life faith music health and vlogs if you are new to my channel don't forget to like to subscribe and click on the notification bell make sure you click that bell okay and if you have not watched my previous videos what are you waiting for make sure you watch them check them out and today we're going to talk about something that is very interesting something that a lot of people have been asking me questions and you know today i just want to address this i just want to answer your questions so a lot of people have been asking me you're enough you studied outside the country what are you doing in nigeria you know so <laughs> Um, and well, well, logically, it might not make any sense to be a nurse. Nurses are hot cake, right? Hot cakes, rather. Is it hot cake or hot cake? I don't know. Hot cake, hot cakes. They're sure hot. <laughs> so, um, the thing is, when I left the country, when I left Nigeria in 2014, the goal was to not return and um, after my schooling you know I was looking at this perfect picture oh after school I'll get married to this white guy you know and I just have my beautiful half caste children and get a job you know work with the best medical doctors and nurses in the world you know and all of that so I had dreams I had goals and all of that so Fast forward to 2018, there was a, an opportunity for me. I schooled in Cyprus, by the way. If you have watched my previous videos, I think you should know. Um, fast forward to 2018, there was an opportunity for me to go to the US, and I did. I was in Wildwood. I was staying in Wildwood, New Jersey. So um, my parents were like, okay. And my uncle also stays in, in the US, he lives in Illinois. So they were like, okay, what's the point of you returning to Cyprus? Why don't you stay back in the US and finish up your school and all of that? And I said, um, I, I actually welcomed the idea and I started looking at schools in the US. So I applied to a school in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not so far from New Jersey. So I was supposed to go and meet with the school. I think they had this campus tour that they were doing at the time and they wanted me to come over. But I was just not freaked out about it and I, I, I didn't go. I stayed back home. So um, I applied to another school. I, or I started looking at another school. I think the name is Grand Canyon University. It's a very good school, by the way. I started looking at it. I called them and I made inquiries and they're like, oh yeah, they have students from my school there. So the transition won't be that hard, but I will have to go through some processes. And I think one of the requirements was that I'd go through, I'll have to go through a community college. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me because I can't be in my final, no, then 2018, I was in my 300 level in Cyprus. So I was like, I can't be in my 300 level and then go to a community college. It doesn't make any sense. So I was like, okay, um, I don't know. I'll probably just finish my school in Cyprus and then return to the US um, for, I don't know. I was willing to actually, after my degree, go through a community college just to get my, to write my NCLEX and all of that. So um, I started praying about it. I was like, God, what would you have me do next? What is the next step for me? What do you want me to do next? Should I, should I, you know, um, go to, to the U.S.? Should I relocate to the U.S.? Um, or should I stay back in the U.S.? Or I should go back to Cyprus? Or I should relocate to Turkey? I didn't know what to do. I was so confused because there were so many options. Turkey had opened up, like they were, they were taking in people, you know, as for, the, I think they were doing their permanent license. And see, I'm thinking of nothing now their permanent um residency sort of then and it was very affordable so i was like um should i just relocate to turkey like what is there like what am i going to do and when when i prayed about it 
I got a leading in my spirit to return to Nigeria. Bent in mind that Nigeria was not even one of my options. It was never an option. It was not in the picture. And because the reason being that it doesn't make any logical sense that I study nursing and then I return to Nigeria to do what like and there are so many things that didn't make any sense. Nigeria was sounding like a dungeon because we're hearing of kidnapping killings every day because I used to follow the news a lot when I was in Cyprus. So like you'll be so scared, like I was freaking scared of coming to Nigeria. And um my parents too were not helping me. Since when I told my parents that okay, this is what God has said and I should come to Nigeria, my parents were not having it. They were not having it, especially my dad. My dad was like, What do you mean by your coming to Nigeria? This country is not good. I think there were some issues he had at his workplace. So I think that also made him to like you know, be so mad. I spoke to two senior friends in Nigeria to join me to pray concerning uh, my return. I, I No, not concerning my return. I told them that I'll be graduating next year and I don't know what to do next. So what am I going to do? Like, they should help me pray about it. I didn't tell them that I'd received any instruction from God. I just told them, okay, help me to pray about this. And both of them, when they got back to me, they got back to me with the same response that God gave to me. In fact, God told one of them to tell me that the man told me that God said he had already spoken to you and you should do this. And he made, he told him again that God said you should return to Nigeria and do this, this, that. Bear it in mind also that when God told me to return to Nigeria, he didn't tell me what I was coming to do. There was no blueprint whatsoever. God just said return to Nigeria. I just got the instruction. And... um. I spoke to someone else in Cyprus who I knew was very like God fearing and very spiritual as well. I spoke to him and he also prayed about it. I didn't tell him that God had told me to return to Nigeria. I just told him, sir, please, can you join me to pray? I don't know what to do after graduation. And he told me the same thing. He said, God said you should return to Nigeria. And so, 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 and so he's going to, you know, just a few years, this is that he's going to. I'm like, okay. You know, God had, like, everything God told me, the three of them, I got a confirmation. And then I was still struggling with it. While I was doing this, then Turkey, that was when Turkey option opened. And then um, I was beginning to look into the Turkey option. My parents had already sent me the money that I needed to relocate for accommodation and everything. They had sent me the money to relocate to Turkey. So my friend, um, he was like, um, that one thing he knows is that when God is, is about to give you something big, that the devil always brings something that looks like it. And try to block your vision if you're not careful you will miss it so when he told me that that was like a you know he I'm like um, hmm. that was like a, a ginger to like follow what God had said to me you know so I was like okay I just had that I just kept it in my palm I'm like okay let me just hold on to this and then I was telling God I said God as I'm going to Nigeria then it happens to me I would you respond <laughs> I was like, God, I will hold you responsible if anything happens to me because you are the one that asked me to go. And I want you, you will be the one to take care of me, everything. I'm sure God was just looking at me and saying, this girl, you don't even know what you're saying. So, um, I came back, I think August, August 4th, 2019, I returned. And, you know, I came, first three days, I told my dad I'm going back. I can't stay in this country. I couldn't eat anything it, like I lost my appetite totally there was nothing that was appetizing to me and the Not everything man. everything sorry guys my speaker everything was looking so weird to me I went I think we passed through the market one time and then I saw vegetables on the floor I'm like daddy why are these vegetables on the floor? I was literally complaining about everything like I couldn't because throughout my stay in school, I didn't come home. I, I, I rather went to, I went to the U.S. for summer holidays. So I didn't come back to Nigeria at all. So when I go back, it, it was not long. It was just four years. But like so many things had changed. Like so many things had changed. I was finding everything so difficult to tolerate. I was, I was, in fact, it was just too much for me. And, you know. I was like, God, are you really sure? It's not too late though. My visa, my I still have my my this in Mojerat, That is my resident permit. I can still go back home. 
and then my dad was like well you're home if you say god told you to come back then you're not going back there is no point returning you're already here so um i came home the first day i returned at the airport yeah, i stepped my foot on it and i i spoke to the ground of nigeria i said i speak to this land you will be good to me you will favor me what holds other people captive will not hold me captive and i prayed and i prayed when i was done i went home you know so um like coming back i think i think a few weeks after i returned my mom was like there was something that happened and my mom was like ah now we can see why god has asked you to come back it's more evident it's clearer now you know i wasn't even really paying attention to it that much but like things that were happening eh? <laughs> i can't give you details but like the things that were happening were were massive i'm like really like if i hadn't come home these things wouldn't have happened you know so so many things were happening that were for my good, for the good of my ministry, for the good of my career, you know, for the good of everything that, you know, that I was doing. And I was happy that I returned because if I hadn't returned, some of, some of the things that I was also learning wouldn't have been possible. God was building my character. In fact, he's still building my character. He's working on so many things in my life. And I look back and I'm like, I'm happy that I came, you know? So... All those things were happening. Bear it in mind that I didn't have a full picture of what I was coming to do, but I still followed. One thing with God is you just need to obey. As long as you are sure that this is God speaking to you, all you need to do is to obey and follow his instruction. Trust me, you will not miss it. So, I don't know the point of your life where you are at at the moment. But one thing I want to say to you is that don't take any decision based on what is looking more palatable or what looks more beautiful to you right now. Follow God's leading and follow God's instruction. It might not look sweet. It might not look palatable. In fact, it might look like, it might look like the worst decision that you have ever made in your life. It might look like the most stupid decision you have ever made. But just as long as god has told you make sure you follow make sure that you follow suit to the end and another thing i want to say is that most times when god speaks to us we don't we don't wait to hear god speak the next word before we move like let me let me how do i say this now like when god gives us a word and then you now move according to that word you don't go back to god to now ask oh lord okay what well, do you understand you need to hear god for every season of your life because i think a few days ago somebody was trying to somebody was saying something to me oh um you know and eh, what if um what if you do this and then you have to like the person was trying to emo not blackmail me emotionally now but you know how somebody wants to use words to like because to just keep you in a place and then the person was just trying to do that and i told and the person was and i told the person i said this thing you're saying is not going to work and the person was like oh have you heard from god i'm like yes you know you also need to be sure of when god speaks to you and you need to be sure of the voice of god so that nobody will bring doubts and distractions to you and when i returned home there were other things that god has started speaking to me about when i came back to nigeria and i i was like god i have heard you he kept on sending a lot of people to me for like confirmation I'm like god i've heard i've heard this thing you've said but he kept on sending confirmations i didn't know that it was for a season of my life where i would start doubting i started doubting this i'm like how is this even going to be possible it doesn't look feasible anymore this particular thing that i'm looking forward to doing it doesn't look feasible it doesn't look as if it's going to happen and then my mind went back to when god was sending confirmations back to back about that thing i'm like god i hold on to your word because you have said it and if you have said it you will do it so i don't know if god has spoken to you and then you heard just that one voice and then you moved and then you didn't hear his voice again when i go back i kept on you have me do here I don't know if it is because of this current location I'm in that God brought me to this country. But every location I go to, I ask, what would you have me do? What is your purpose for me in this place? What is your assignment for me currently in this place? So you need to know what God is saying per time, per season. And another thing is, your time in a particular place must have end, might have ended. And because you didn't go back to God to hear God, you are still there struggling. 
And maybe God has already told you, move you. It's time for you to move. But you are still there because you're not hearing God. So make sure it is very important that you are led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. You need to be led by God's Spirit. You need to hack into his words. And it's not, you will not just wake up one morning and say, Oh yeah, God, do. I want to get married. Or I want to, what do I do next? Should I move to this place now? Like, it's something you have to keep constantly practicing. And I, let, lest I forget to say this, one reason why my parents were able to just allow me to return without much quarrel or much problems was because there was a proven track record. Ever since I was a kid, God speaks to me about stuff. And when I tell them, because like when I was growing up, if I see anything in a vision, I will tell my parents. I wake up immediately to tell my dad especially. And then once I tell them, it's just a matter of time, it will happen. So because of that track record, my parents didn't argue with me and I told them that this is what God has asked me to do. They didn't like it. Yes, they are our parents. You know, sometimes people care for you and love you so much for... Their love for you might be detrimental to your destiny. With this being said, I don't want to take much of our time. Thank you so much for staying with us today. Thank you for watching our videos. Thank you for your constant support. Don't forget to like this video, to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And if this video has impacted you in any way, give a comment down below. And um, don't forget to share to your friends as well. I don't know the point of your life where you are at. I don't know what decision you have to make. What I'm going to say to you is go to God and he will lead you. Thank you very much. Love you guys. Bye.